Greetings YouTube. Today we're working on something which isn't a weapons build. I recently saw someone that made a device designed to tighten wire into clamps. Um, this, this is just, I don't know, I actually have, I have a clue where I got this wire from. I got it from someplace. I got two rolls of it. This is the wire I'm going to be working on. I think originally this kind of a device was used for like baling wire because this is a farm thing, I guess, because it's very it's universal. You can take the wire and if you have one of these devices, you can uh, make a clamp of any size you need, which is very handy when you're living on a farm and you never know what you're going to need. So having something which is like a near universal clamp size is very very useful now the, the you can buy professional devices that do this and i've seen some really highly skilled craftsmen on youtube make some that are just works of art i'm not making a work of art i want to make a tool that's useful and the guy i saw it i'm going to do everything i can to remember to make sure i link to the video so i give credit where credit is due um, he used a piece of square tack stock tubing and i'm going to use this one here i got two to play with this one's a little on the small side so i'm going to be using this one and you cut an angle here and this becomes the end that actually does the tightening that actually does the guiding so that this this end will be used to guide the wire it'll have little notches in it for the wire to sit in and then it's going to be about six seven inches long and i'm going to cut this section out so you just have two walls and a hole going through now he designed this so that his tightening device was a steel rod or iron rod that had been bent at a 90 degree angle so you had just a a, a 90 degree crank there's a slot in this the short end that goes through the through the tubing you put the wire in there you turn the big crank and that tightens the wire beautiful idea problem is is while the design he came up with gives you a lot of leverage i mean you can make the the crank handle as long as you want to um, it means you have to be able to turn if it's like nine inches long You've got to have to have space for an 18 inch arc to get that thing turned Which means it limits your applications if you're only doing hoses. That's not much of an issue I want a tool that's more versatile than that So I was thinking why not use something that will allow me to have a ratchet instead of just a, um, a Rod so I picked this up for two bucks at um, a flea market and I'm going to cut the end off and put a slot in it and that's going to go through my tubing which I can then use a ratchet on. This is actually a snap-on. It's a really nice snap-on I've got. Um, I've, this is like my favorite uh, my favorite uh, ratchet I've got. It's a half inch drive. Um, that way I can just have to have a certain arc. I don't have to go all the way around. I can just use an arc to crank it which works for me because the first thing I want to do with this tool once I get it made is to build a new weapon and instead of using bolts to hold it together I'm going to use wire I want to see how well that works and I think it will and it will give a new post-apocalyptic vibe to anything I build so we're going to see if that works or not if it does cool and if it doesn't I still have a tool which will let me tighten wire and make hose clamps and stuff out of it not a bad thing so the first thing I need to do is cut an angle here, about 45 degrees will do, um, and then cut a piece off. And then what he did is he actually cut the sections out that he drilled through. I'm going to drill the hole, say if you're looking at it this way, the, 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 it's going this way. I'm going to drill the hole through while, while it's still a square piece of tubing. I get more support that way while drilling it, drilling it. And when I'm done, then I can cut the top and bottom out so I have clear clearance. I think it's better to cut to drill to do drilling while your tubing is extant. You have more support and you're less likely to get, you know, things banded and stuff out of your way. So they're going to be three cuts, one here, a uh, four, one here, one for a slot, the angle, the length, and then I have to take the sections out, so that's going to be some more. And we're going to see how that works. He used a plasma cutter. I was very jealous. I don't have a plasma cutter. I just have an angle grinder. So we're going to work with what I got, which is an angle grinder. Um, and we're going to see how well I can pull this off. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. We shall discover. Um, so this is just going to go into my stockpile. I have never made a weapon with a square stock handle, I don't think. So maybe this will become something. It's a nice piece of tubing. I, I think I got this for some other project I did. 
but uh, it's nice. It's good quality. I don't know what the hell where hell, hell I got it from, but it's good quality tubing. So we're gonna play with this. We're gonna do some cutting, and when I got this stuff processed, I will then show you what it looks like before I begin the final assembly. And if anything interesting happens along the way, I'll make sure that you find out. And yes. I have my shop shoes on, so I'm not going to melt my new boot, my new shoes. If I have any melting, it'll happen to these. <sighs> Always make sure you don't melt your shoes. So here we have the preliminary cuts done. So I got this and this, and I just freehanded those with my angle grinder. I didn't do anything fancy. And I also cut these little notches. Can you see the little notches? Yeah. The guy in the video, he used a file and did it all nice and neat. I just cut four notches with the uh, edge of my uh, angle grinder. Boom, 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 boom. I have a fair amount of control with that thing now. I've gotten used to using it. And that's going to be what actually guides the wire when I'm done. I'm not done yet, obviously. So the next step is going to be is to drill a hole here all the way through. And then when that is done, uh, take out this section here and this section here and that gives me clearance to play with getting the wire through this device which will have a slot in it and then you'll tighten it up and that will tighten up the wire here and when you're done you go and you bend it over and that is your final uh your final fastener you're finished so now i have to find the sized hole i need size drill for that so what I'm probably going to do is cut this off next so that I have uh, just the shaft to play with and then I may just, I may measure it or I may just, uh, if this is like, this is like 360 I think and a 3 8 is 375. So a 3 8 is probably what I'm going to end up getting to be getting, going to be using because that would just be a smidge over what I need. So yeah, so I'm going to cut that off next and then make sure the drill bit works and then we'll work on uh, the hole in the tubing. We've achieved a new stage. The hole is drilled in. I have laid down this little line. That's the depth I'm going to cut in this way. I'm going to cut slots this way so that the only thing that we left will be the walls here. That should be enough space. I can always cut it deeper if I want to. You can always take off more. You can't put anything back. Um, and this is already done. So I got it to cut the length and I cut that slot and you can see that slot right there and I just freehanded that slot I did pretty good I just aimed for the center and went for it I did have to change the blades the first cutoff blade I used wore out so I had to put a new blade in there to get the get the second half of this slot done but that's pretty good so what happens is you put the slot in like this doing this one handed isn't easy and that's what it looks like so when you rotate it it will it will pull the wire taut that's the goal and because there's a slope here it naturally has a stop. When the other one, uh, the person who did the video I saw, his L arm, he had to put a grommet on there so that the the arm would stand off from the unit, from the, from the square stock, stock tubing. I have the advantage of because this slope is already there, that acts as my standoff. So that can't go any further this way. And the slot is deep enough that it will line up like that. It will line up with the, even the the second set if I wanted to use a wider, I'm going to use the narrow one to start with, but if I wanted to use the two outside ones I could and this is a, that's a, that's wide enough. So the job now is to cut this way and then make a plunge cut and I, what I'm probably going to end up having to do is make a plunge cut and then just bend it back and forth and break it and then I can clean it up with a file. Um, this handwork. That's I use the fly already to clean up the edges on this already. Take off the burrs. I use my belt sander to knock the burrs off the outside of the holes. I don't know where my deburring bit is. I have a deburring cone somewhere. I got no clue what I, what I do with it. I got to find that. Um, and I use the the file to clean up the inside of the tube on this end as well, so that it would be nice and and tidy. So there's no sharp edges on there. Okay, you don't need sharp edges because you know. You find it, you have a sharp edge on something, and you always find it when you least expect it. It always gets you in the softest spot you got. It's really annoying. So, I uh, put my headphones and my goggles back on, and it's going to be time for some more cutting. I'll come in here, zinc, zinc, um, and then make plunge cuts to get rid of those. And I may just come in straight, like this, and start the cuts that way. 
we'll see. I'm gonna just clamp it right there and I'll start, I'll just clamp it down like this and start my cutting. I don't need anything fancy. Um, I actually find clamping things to the workbench is actually a little easier than using my vice grips, my vices, my vice grips, my vice sometimes because the ang that this position is nice because I can really, I can hold my angle grinder with my arms against, against my torso and it gives me a lot of control so I can make a nice easy cut going in with a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, uh, precision to exactly where I want to cut it. If I'm up here, it's, it's, it's higher. I, I don't have as much control. So there are times I use this and there are times I use down here. This is a good working height. Funny about that, that a workbench has a surface that's a good working height. So here is the completed tool. Here are the pieces that came off of this. Uh, I've cleaned it up. I actually found I could use my belt sander to get in there and do a lot of this work in this. So now it's time to uh, try it out, passing the wire through here, through the slot in this, and then you tighten it this way. And then when you're done, you should have a clamp that is tight enough to hold a hose in place. I just don't know if I have a hose. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I can test this so you can see what I'm talking about and show that it, it clamps, but I don't think I actually have a hose around here. I don't use hoses a lot in my life. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. So let me poke around and see if I can figure out something that's gonna look like a hose being clamped in place. I have encountered an impasse. So I got this old bold piece of a tool handle, which has just been kicking around. I have, I figured I might use it for something someday and I was gonna use it for this. And this piece of uh, essentially gi belt, I have an entire roll of this. I, I got like, I don't know, 200 something feet of this stuff. So I was just gonna take this and I was gonna use that wire I got right there. And I was just gonna clamp it in place, which is very similar to the kind of material a hose would have, or say around a fitting. Awesome, great demonstration. I didn't take into account how much force this thing exerts because the answer is a lot because as I put the wire through here and into the slot and then I turned it so it would grip then I started using my ratchet and I just snapped the wire in half so I need to get my hands on some actual bailing wire that will have the structural integrity to show you how this works and probably the integrity I'm going to need for the project I want to do. I'm not going to say what that project is yet. Um, so I need to get my hands on some bailing wire and I probably can find that at Tractor Supply. I figure if anybody has that, that's going to be Tractor Supply. So I may do that this weekend if I get a chance. Maybe I won't because the project I'd like to work on I get myself stuck in ruts and I'm like, I want to work on the next project and I have a hard time getting out of that until I work on that project. So this needs to get functional before I can work on the next part project because the next project isn't overly complex. It just kind of needs this piece, the wire to work in this device. So yeah, impasse. So I may save this file and not complete this video until I get some bailing wire so I can show you how it works. Because until I get the bailing wire, I'm not going to be able to do the project I want to do anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Alrighty, so I'm done today. I'm not doing anything else down here. So I'm going to go upstairs and hang out with my wife for a bit. And uh, be kind of annoyed. Hmm. My wire is too weak. Lame. Well, I went out and got myself some galvanized 17 gauge steel fencing wire. 350 feet, you can get it at Tractor Supply for 10 bucks. And with that, I was able to make a clamp. Now, it took me like five tries to get this. This is my first try. Um, I had to get the length right and it was about 30 something inches I think to get this this particular size clamp and this is again this is just a piece of uh, waste wood and some waste uh, fabric but it gives you an idea of what you would be doing to clamp a hose onto a fixture because uh, I don't have a hose nor a fixture and essentially what you're doing is that you're bringing your you're passing the the, the wire through here through the slot I made in the, in the uh, in the extension, and then you're just cranking it. 
And the important thing to do is you gotta make sure you get one of these little teeth to bite onto the loop because you're drawing against the wire that you've already, you've already got here. So I just pass this wire through this loop twice and then just start to crank it. And I, when I cranked it up to the point where I felt it was secure, because even at 17 gauge, I can crank this hard enough, I can get enough leverage with this that I can snap this wire. I'd have to probably go up to 14 gauge, which I can't get. I mean, I just didn't think I would need 14 gauge. Maybe in retrospect, I should have gotten 14 gauge. Um, but 14 gauge would have been better, I think. I may go get some to try it out. Uh, because I can still crank up hard enough, enough torque to break 17 gauge. But I was able to get the feel for it, know when I had a good bite, and then stop. And then when you're done, you just bend it over, whoop, pull it off, clip it clean, and hammer it down, and you're done. And you've made a clamp which is very, very tight and universal in size. I can make this any size I want to make it as long as I've got enough wire. So this particular setup here with this new fixture, I've, this new device I've made, I'm going to try to build something and use wire to hold a blade in place. I don't know if it's going to work and I don't know if I'm going to have to get myself 14 gauge instead of 17 gauge because the 14 gauge is going to give me some significantly greater structural integrity. So that may be worth my time. I'm not saying the 17 gauge isn't worth my time for other things, for lighter duty clamping. But for the heavier stuff, I may actually want to get some heavier duty stuff like 14. Uh, I didn't think I'd need it, but now that I've experimented with it a little bit more, I think I probably do. Live and learn. Um, you never know what you're going to, uh, going to need until you actually try something. So my fixture works. I'm very happy about that. Uh, and it has the big advantage that I can use a ratchet instead of the L rod, that the L shaped crank that the guy who did the video, and the guy who did the video was Jenny.Swiss, J-E-N-N-I dot S-W-I-S-S, Jenny Swiss. Um, and that's where I got this in inspiration from. And like I said, I had to watch that video like four or five times before I finally figured out what, he, what I was doing wrong and what he was doing right, and it was very much getting one of the little teeth to bite onto the loop so I was drawing against the loop so I'm I'm pulling the wire tight against itself then once I felt I had a bite then it was bended over cut it off hammer closed though I'm probably going to have to get some better quality uh, wire cutters down here because at the moment these little ones I'm using right now they'll go through two like two pieces of uh, 17, but it's not easy, 17 gauge. So if I go to 14 gauge, that's going to be much harder. So I'm going to have to uh, rethink that. Um, so I may want to see if I have another set. I know I've got a pair of Lyman pliers kicking around. Maybe the Lyman pliers would be a better choice. Um, because the Lyman pliers are larger, and they're designed to handle a tougher gauge wire, because they're designed for Lyman. Um, so yeah. So, thank you for being here for this particular build. I'm glad that uh, you joined me. I hope you don't mind that it wasn't a weapons build, but hopefully this will allow me to work on things in the future. But I do think I'm gonna wanna step up to seven to 14 gauge now that I think about it. I really think I do. But like I said, I can use a 17 for, for, for smaller um, applications. And uh, I think it would work, because the, the key is is that you're pulling against a single loop, even though I've got this wrapped around twice, all of that pressure is coming off that single loop of wire, so you don't have a double loop. I guess I could double loop it if I really wanted to. I could, I guess, if I wanted to. I could try. I don't know, maybe I will. But, like I said, thanks for being here. I hope that you'll be here for the next crafting video.